Right, now we are going to be looking at AC 2.3, sociological theories on crime, but we are going to be focusing now on interactionism. Okay, so um, again, um, to give you a bit of grounding in terms of the overview of the theory, you can see the word interactions in there. Okay, now interactions and interpretations are going to be key for the interactionist perspective. Unlike things like Marxism and functionism, which are looking at the big scale social structures like the class system, for example, these are going to be looking on the small scale. So when we consider our interactionists, it's all small scale in terms of their, um, their viewpoint. They're concerned with individuals and their responses to stimulus, the way they interpret the world around them. They see themselves as people uh, or the people involved who can shape the world themselves, actively engaged in that process. Um, principally, we are going to be looking at the work of Howard Becker. Now, Howard Becker is an interactionist and Becker uh, is known for the labelling theory. And obviously, when you consider the idea of labelling somebody, giving out a label, um, that is obviously going to be something that ties in with an interactionist way of working, an interactionist way of thinking, because it's giving out those labels on a small scale and seeing how it affects you or it affects the person who has received those labels. Becker is going to say that all deviant behaviour is behaviour that people so label. So deviance, like with many other theories that would agree, is also a social construct, something that is made by society and we decide what the deviant thing is. Um, and this may vary from place to place and time to time. So Becker's process then um, has a flow to it. OK, so there are stages in Howard Becker's theory. The first stage is the act, the act itself. So imagine now that I um, took your phone off you, grabbed it off the desk or wherever you've got it placed at the minute, um, and, I, and I grabbed that phone. A lot of people would say, when I ask you what you've done there, they would say, he's stolen that phone. But that's not strictly true, right? Think of it as an act. I have taken the phone. I have picked up the phone. I have grabbed it and left with it. After you have done an act, then you label the act. This is where this idea of social construction comes in, that deviant behaviour is behaviour we so label. You have to do a behaviour first, then you label the behaviour as a society, good or bad, crime, deviant, whatever it is you want to call it. So I've taken your phone and then you are, as part of a society, as a moral entrepreneur within that society, going to label that act as theft. That is what we call it when you take something that in theory belongs to somebody else. That is what we say is a bad thing. So we've labelled that act as theft. Then, according to labelling theory, you start to internalise the label and you begin to act it out. Something that Becker calls a self-fulfilling prophecy. People are saying you are a thief, you've done this. So you inter internalise that idea of being a thief and act it out again and again, because that's what people have said. Once you act it out so many times, it becomes your master status. And your master status is a concept or a label that you are commonly known as. It's a label that overrides all of the labels or characteristics that you may be referred to. So a common uh, master status would be homeless. OK, so let's say you go into the city centre um, and unfortunately you'll see somebody who's homeless. Now you recognise them by their master status before any contact has really ever occurred with them. You can tell a person uh, is homeless based off where they are sat, if they're sat on the street or if they're sat on a corner. If they've got a cup in front of them, you know, for, for you to put change, you can tell by their clothes. You can also tell by their, their first interaction with you, which might be, have you got any change, rather than a hello or a how are you doing, which would be a normal greeting. So you know the master status of that particular group and you can ascribe that to them even without any communication. When you have a master status that is negative, 
like thief, like homeless, nobody in regular society will engage with you based off of your deviant master status. You're forced then to engage only with other people of similar status. And for example, who in the homeless community do you see talking to them? Probably other people within the homeless community. And at that point then, you embarked upon what Beckett might call a deviant career path. Now, this idea of a, a deviant career, you can see if you carry on with my analogy of, of homeless in the master status, deviant career means you're going to be on a pathway of criminality. Um, you're going to be engaging with that regularly. You're going to be hanging about with people of the similar criminal background. And also then you're going to end up being a, a target by law enforcement agents and agencies of social control, such as the police, which will probably be the other group that you see engaging with people from that community. So that is your labelling process. Uh, and a good study that will exemplify that is Jock Young uh, and his study of North London drug takers. Uh, we can call it informally the study on the hippies. Uh, and what Jock Young will find is that after an initial act of um, smoking weed, these hippies get labelled dirty, lazy druggies and they begin to internalise that label. They get into a small group and then that group ends up taking heroin. And if you look from Jock Young's hippies, you can see how you start off with an act, the label of the dirty, lazy druggies, the internalisation of that label, and then the master status of the hippies forming a smaller group who now take heroin, you're embarking on a deviant career, and the drug use has gone from a, a, a mild drug to a very harmful drug. Um, so Jock Young's hippies perfectly kind of exemplifies Becker's labelling process and explains that from an initial act, the response to that act from the public, from the press, from moral entrepreneurs like the police can lead to that being made worse. Um, we also know um, that it's, it's important to, to look at something called the deviancy amplification spiral. Now, the deviancy amplification spiral is primarily focusing on um, how moral entrepreneurs, the group who give out labels, such as um, the media are responsible for um, this process and the deviance being made worse. Deviancy amplification just means when the deviance is made louder. Um, there's another previous video, which I'll put up in the top corner here, which you can link to, which refers and gives you details on a study by Stan Cohen into um, an interaction, a violent interaction uh, between the mods and the rockers on Brighton Beach in and around the 1960s. So, um, in his study, what he will find is that the press create what we would call a moral panic regarding um, an interaction between these two groups. And this is what the other video will show you. Um, when you get a moral panic, you get a group to be afraid of. They're called folk devils. And society was very afraid of the mods and rockers. Uh, and after a small fight, which was kicked off the moral panic, we end up with deviancy amplification when the mods and the rockers meet up again and have a fight which has got more arrests and harsher punishment on a different beach in Brighton on the south coast of England. Again, this deviancy amplification spiral showing how a small act of violence, in the case of mods and rockers, a small fight, then through the process of labelling by the media, and look how similar this is, like media moral panic, it's like giving out the label, they become folk devils, that's the status. The deviance is made worse. It feels like a very similar process, doesn't it? Um, how that deviance then kind of explodes and is made far worse than the initial act straight away. Now, obviously, this is a bit of a whistle-stop tour of these processes from interactionism, but there are lots of problems. And the principal problem is um, what is everybody's response to the label? Let's say that you yourself have been labelled naughty kid in school. Does every kid labelled a naughty kid in school internalise that and become a naughty kid? No. In Jock Young's study of the hippies, after smoking weed and being labelled dirty, lazy druggies, they form a small group. As soon as you recognise that they're forming a smaller group to take heroin, a smaller group will mean some of the larger group have dropped out. Why did they respond um, differently to the label? And in Stan Cohen's Mods and Rockers, not every one of the Mods and Rockers who even turned up on the beach was going to be violent and aggressive like 
they thought they were going to be and not every modern rocker will have gone down to the beach to engage in um, you know a fight between these two different subcultures people can reject the label people are not stuck and um, behaving as the label should dictate or as it's perceived from an interactionist perspective that these labels should dictate